In essence, a multiplexer, also known as a MUX, is a device that selects one of several data input lines, then forwards the signal onto just one output line. A multiplexer needs some additional inputs whose purpose is to control which of the data inputs should be directed to the output. These are referred to as the control lines. More about how these work in a moment. By changing the values of the control lines, any one of the data inputs can be sent to the output. This multiplexer has eight inputs and one output and is therefore known as an 8 to 1 multiplexer. A demultiplexer, also known as a demux, does the opposite of a multiplexer. It takes a single data input and directs it to one of several possible outputs. This is a 1 to 8 demultiplexer. The demultiplexer is controlled in the same way as a multiplexer. Depending on the control lines, a single input can be directed to just one of the outputs. Multiplexers and demultiplexers are often used together, for example to convert from parallel data transmission into serial data transmission and then back again. This is particularly important when it comes to transmitting data over a network, for example. In this application, the job of the multiplexer is to take each of its inputs, which arrive simultaneously, that is, in parallel, and pass them on, one after another, that is, in a serial format. The job of the demultiplexer is to combine this stream of data back into parallel format. Needless to say, the control lines of the multiplexer and the demultiplexer need to be synchronised. Notice the need for a buffer to collect the recombined outputs before sending them on their way. Multiplexers and demultiplexers can also be used together to allow different signals to share the same transmission medium. The transmission medium could be copper cable, fibre optic cable or even radio waves. In a system known as time division multiplexing, or TDM for short, a multiplexer takes multiple data streams and by periodically sampling each in a round robin fashion, converts them into one high speed output stream. Each time the multiplexer cycles through all of the inputs once, which might take a total of about one millisecond, it generates a frame of muxed data. A demultiplexer at the receiving end separates the combined streams. This type of time division multiplexing relies on both ends being synchronised and is therefore called synchronous TDM. A variation of this technique is known as asynchronous TDM or sometimes statistical TDM. Rather than allocate an equal amount of time to each transmitter, even when the transmitter is idle, the multiplexer can favour those with something to send. Additional information needs to be included in each frame to indicate how much of each transmitter's data has been included. Other variations you might come across include frequency division multiplexing, wavelength division multiplexing and code division multiplexing. Multiplexing techniques are an extremely important aspect of data transmission in mobile telephone networks TV and DAB radio broadcasting, digital audio mixing, and more. To build a multiplexer, we can use combinational logic, that is, a combination of regular logic gates. Here's the inside of an 8 to 1 multiplexer. Notice the 8 data inputs on the left, one data output on the right, and three control lines at the bottom. If you trace the voltages of the control lines through the wires, you can see that when they're set to 000, for example, the top AND gate is selected. Now, because the data input of this AND gate is high, that is a binary 1, the output of the AND gate is also high. All of the AND gate outputs are connected to an OR gate. Since one of the inputs of this OR gate is high, the output of the OR gate, and therefore the output of the multiplexer, is 1. Examine the difference when the control lines are set to 0, 0, 1. This time the second AND gate down is selected, but because the data input is 0, so is the output of the multiplexer.
When the control lines are 0, 1, 0, the third input from the top is selected, another binary 1. 0, 1, 1 selects the fourth input, and so on. A demultiplexer is even simpler to build using combinational logic. In fact, the circuitry is almost identical to a decoder with an enabling input, except that the enabling input serves as a data input. Once again, if you trace the values of the control lines through the wires, you can see how one of the eight available outputs is selected. Multiplexers and demultiplexers have an important role to play when it comes to computer memory. Here's a simplified diagram of a DRAM module capable of reading or writing one bit at a time. When reading the memory, it's the job of a multiplexer to select a single value from one of many sense amplifiers according to the column address and direct it towards the output buffer. When writing to the memory, it's the job of a demultiplexer to take a single input value and use it to update one of the sense amplifiers. A different multiplexer is used by the computer's memory controller to present the row address and the column address to the memory module separately from each other. This so-called memory address multiplexing is used to regulate the stages of reading and writing operations and has the added benefit of keeping down the number of external pins. It should be said that the multiplexers and demultiplexers integrated into a modern DRAM memory module are highly optimised for space and performance. Furthermore, a single device can be built using CMOS technology to serve as a multiplexer and a demultiplexer with common inputs and outputs. To summarise then, a multiplexer is an electronic device that selects one of several possible input lines and routes it towards a single output. A demultiplexer is the functional opposite of a multiplexer. It takes only one input line and directs it to one of several possible output lines. The input line of a multiplexer, or the output line of a demultiplexer, is chosen by applying the appropriate values to a group of control lines. A multiplexer, or a demultiplexer, can be constructed by combining familiar AND, OR and NOT gates. However, some integrated devices are built from the ground up using complementary metal oxide semiconductor technology, and these are highly optimised for their purpose. Multiplexers usually select one of multiple inputs, to generate a single output, but it's possible to build a multiplexer that selects a subset of the possible inputs to generate multiple outputs. Multiplexers and demultiplexers have numerous applications. For example, in data transmission, telephony, broadcasting, digital audio, and more. Multiplexers and demultiplexers are also fundamental components of computer memory.